find is that diagnostic is what you get when you get rather are consistent with what you're getting. This is an important distinction. Okay, and I may get some confusion regarding this point. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I would now like to outline my connection to the federal Georgia and the Alpha Georgia Christian Connection. Uh, in about the year 2002, uh, I was depressed to buy lost enough to do some chest X-rays and get them did. I reviewed the X-rays, X-rays approximately 250 of them in my office over a roughly four-month period of time in, in West Virginia. I felt that of the roughly 250 that 50 were consistent with some of those of these, approximately 35 were in the Texas MDS. I did not make diagnosis with this in any cases. My office staff could find only two readings on this individual that did not exist on any. However, the numbers in the two readings apparently are listed as the sources of di- the diagnosis was given. This is not correct. In my reports, I clearly stated that the X-rays were, cons- X-rays were consistent with silicosis. I know of no complete examination for diagnosis of silicosis that I offered to the MDS. However, the findings were fine with two tests. They were done with the done slightly and said to be complete time correct. I would not request a full cure in any hearing to attend to show up in any hearing. I was not asked for a cure for not requesting a hearing before Judge Jack. In, in order to state and approach the diagnoses and underlying methodologies of the Alzheimer's Dr. Levine are not discussed in this form. I do hold the parties because of the relatively small number of diagnoses Dr. Levine Dr. Levine issued. He and his doctor testified in the Dr. hearing and in court deposition, end quote. Again, to the best of my knowledge, I believe the form two readings did not make diagnosis of silicosis on any of the individuals in the MDS. I was not criticized by Judge Jack, and I believe I have not been engaged in any of the activities like the ones that he was critical of in his order. Over the years, when performing these readings, if I saw anything potentially inconsistent or such as massive denials, it was made very clear that on my annual report of the B reading, the all seven of the B reading forms made comments that my office staff uh, contact, would contact the law firm or order the physician by phone to let us know if we had the malady so that we would immediately have follow up in a timely fashion. This protocol provided a triple check to ensure that the person who was supposed to have appropriate follow up prior to the treating physician. I have been involved in on site screening facilities. In present screening, we must sell a chest x ray to a particular source not to infer our understanding of reading. Examination consisted of concerns the occupational and medical history. Our process then by actually dictating the patient's report as a blood test report to the patient's credit at the time in advance so that he or she could make an efficient and accurate evaluation. This methodology was to obtain as much banking information as possible. Then a physical examination is directed to the presence and nature of any disturbance. This includes auscultation of the wrists and thumbs, inspection of the chest, percussion of the chest, use of cell phones, looking for positive diagnosis of aphasia, looking for super predictor antioxidant information and vitamin and stress points, and checking for any hints such as a general infection in patients. Therefore, the individual was known precisely what was in the report. If there was any concern about a nausea, for example, on the x ray, I would show this to the patient myself. It's my practice not only to tell the physical nature of injury as a matter is, but also to give written notifications to the patient at that time. Often, as is the case, an individual would ask me about this report, and I would answer fully. My concern is that an on treatment make sure that the individual understands the results of this test as good as could be followed by his own doctor. Whenever I made the diagnosis of significant bone disease, I informed the individual and advised follow up by the clinical treating physician. It has been my understanding that without making specific recommendations regarding treatment or prescribing medications, that a doctor patient relationship is not established by this procedure, and I was not the board to consult and not a treating physician. Nonetheless, I have always tried to protect the patient's health from these treatments. I wish that my concerns were accurate and if there are any diagnoses which I have made. Because of my understanding of a lack of doctor patient relationship, I believe that I was able to 
point examination of the state's position by him and his wife. The subsequent and several years ago, they devised actions that this was probably not this was probably not accurate. The city sought to analyze it and resulted in Hampton Park was performing these examinations and they said it was not causing a license. I'm stopping you. Thank you. Thank you, I don't know how to explain it. This is Tom Stoke. States for having conducted screenings complied with the applicable federal, state, and local laws and regulations concerning the administration of diagnostic tests such as x rays. Refuses to answer all of our questions based, based on why that self determination might be the equivalent of the SI state test. Good question. And it is, we have attempted to insert this line in response to every further question that we might have today. And given that, if there's no further questions from the members, I would just mention at this time that subject to the right of the chair to recall the So at this time, we'll excuse. And Mr. Dow says the owner and operator of Dr. Hampton's Diagnostic is with us. Can you tell me, sir, if the new company in each of the states for having conducted screenings complied with the applicable federal, state, and local laws and regulations concerning the administration of diagnostic tests such as x rays? Can you advise the council on whether or not they've been approved? And if so, can you? So you're refusing to answer all of our questions based on the reason why the self determination test might be the equivalent of the U.S. Constitution? Yes. And it is your intention to assert that right in any questions we may have today? Yes. And given that, if there are no further questions from the committee, I would just miss you at this time, subject to the right of recall by the chair, and decline to give you any aid to hear our subpoena, subject to the subpoena. And at this time, we excuse. Now, Ms. Brazell, is it Brazell? Brazell. Yes, sir, it's Brazell. Now, what is your title, Dr. Williams? Um, Once Road Manager. Road Manager. Road Manager. Right. And what is your position today? Well, RCS is no longer with the business. But you're no longer in business. We're not conducting any screenings anymore. And where did you go out of business? Um, it was in 2005. Okay, so were you working at that time? Yes, sir. Now, at that time, you were contracted with the auto companies to do screenings and provide millions to the auto company folks who obviously screened you, is that correct? I'm sorry, can you say that again? I said it, it, it was your contract with the auto companies or with the auto companies that you would do screenings to provide names to the auto companies of those people who had gone through the screenings for safe basis. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. And how many uh, doctors were hired by your firm to help you with this project? I can't answer that accurately because there were several. Well, so it's your argument. Yes, sir. Okay. And what, when you hired these uh, physicians, what were you asking them to do? I did not hire the physicians. And what was, it, what was your understanding as to why they were hired? To read x-rays. And to? Be a patient with me. Okay. And to expect them to give diagnosis? Yes, sir. And so when they were detained, that was understood. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Dr. Altmaier, you indicated in your testimony that it was not your understanding that you would simply be recalled. Yes, sir. Now, I, at times I would read x-rays, and if you remember, I was on site. I, I had some silicosis bridge when they took the x-ray. It's consistent with silicosis. 
Grant Arkey and I did this one with whom I first met met Grant Grant. I mean, it's going through my classes that I took with him, I was the Grant technician in his world. And he was great, a physical exam and everything. The first thing he said to me was the first time we met, and I think the way that he did to the report, if they had played with magazines and played with it with boxes, it would have been a lot of fun to do that. Yeah, it's a good thing to have a box for it. Yeah, so in some instances, you will diagnose it. In some cases, it will be other instances, you will have to That's correct. Now, you may have heard earlier when I was discussing the first cancer that the Legal of Texas, on behalf of RTS, examined patients in the state of Texas in June 23rd, 1994, and they concluded Utilizes practice medicine as a method. And then they consider what they were doing there and how they compared to the state practice medicine. I, I didn't feel that this was happening in my case. And the reason I, I think it might be very important to find out is that I didn't believe that there was an occupation of any condition. And I couldn't understand how you could be practicing medicine without an occupation of any condition. I would think different of that now because now I know more than I did back at that point in time. But I learned that uh, I think maybe in practice medicine I stopped it. So what were you actually doing in Texas in the 1980s? Did you take your medical histories? Or you had what, what I would do is that they had to say what's consistent with Submit that report to RTS. Yes. And in that report, do you have some diagnosis? Yes. If, if, the, if the x ray was uh, negative, then I would consider it non consistent with the uh, diagnosis. If the x ray was positive and not positive, uh, consistent with, then that might be the, the form of an additional physical examination. And after that additional physical examination, I believe that the best thing for an x-ray to do is go and have cultural enhancement surgery that I would recommend. We know in the forums that you submitted to the RTS, the judge was very pleased with your medical assertion about your belief that this patient in psychosis, and at least in Dr. Morgan and Dr. Patrick, as part of your medical license in Mississippi and Texas, both stated that you used the whole term in your letters the diagnosis, and that certainly is the practice of medicine. Oh, I know that now. Yeah. And Dr. Hilton, uh, in, in your testimony, you indicated that you couldn't uh, quite listen that they had a file of x ray reports and that they examined many, many patients, but that you were not aware of. of any of those patients, is that correct? I was not aware of any of those particular patients. But that would have to be an opinion. Well, I was just hired to work with patients and they had good good reports. And and you were hired by the Andy Morgan Experience Company to make this up as to who was who was basing the letter of this to this report. Mason. Now Mason. You know, when you look at Jack Hill's assessment, uh, it, this is a form that you read your own mind. It talks about, of course, we have a background in medical disorders and patients and so forth. But at the, at the summary, it says, on the basis of this client's history of occupational exposure to silica and B reading of the client's uh, chest x ray, then for the reason to do a medical surgery, uh, this person has silicosis. And it may be a signal of the body. But uh, uh, your position is that you did not understand that that was there and you didn't find that she had any of those 
pressure. And I assume that the way you said it is to the point where you have to stop and think about it. Right? And sometimes there are ways to do that. Right? Now, maybe you can escape some of that pressure and make peace with it. Thank you. 
you hold on for the kickoff speech that you gave to get the physical speech. And when someone hit you up and you can't get touch with them, which is why they weren't so nice and regular about when I got the point guard treatments and you went under the IFS and to get records on one side, those types of in- interactions. See, that's why I'm saying that I saw this video. Yeah, I don't think you'll ever do that again, will you? Just that you're trying to do it. And I understand that. Um, how many, and you said you were picked by the Dallas Braves for the League of Women's Game? Uh, yes, sir. And how big did it be to you for the Braves? Uh, I would say I, I would count it. I would say maybe, maybe, maybe a hundred. I mean, I would, I would say a lot. Did you see a lot? A lot. Of oh, there's no doubt about it. Everything that you present to us is good. It's good to come to honor you know, and to play. It's the same thing for the corner that I keep in. And it was much more careful than most of the things that I write, but also it had to do with my life and it was just a good thing. I had to diagnose with some cases that I didn't have a license for as a result, but uh, I still can practice in Texas medicine. Specifically, that uh, some of the things that you wrote that were within the first 10 days that made you realize that this was uh, Texas medicine? Well, I think, uh, I think you said you can make a diagnosis and you actually have to diagnose. If you say that you make a diagnosis that someone has this disease, if you don't uh, have to get medicine or recommend uh, treatment or something else, that would kind of make it up and figure it out. Say, I, you know, I'm starting to think sometimes that it's a kind of right down the definition of all the way I could have done that, uh, just like just other schools I wouldn't order that medicine. And this looks an awful lot like Mexican medicine to me, but I don't know what it is. I've got a smoking history on this, so this might be an important thing that I can't get written in any form, but uh, have you ever smoked tobacco?
Sarah Wendell Craig has spoken with and discussed with Trent John Plummer, the Governor of Texas, and said, Governor, I got to stop passing this pipe bread. So that's a, that's a fairly significant exposure to hydrogen sulfur to get uh, trans asbestos. The next slide, though, we also work around skin cells. And as a primary diagnosis, is silicosis. Uh, I guess I'm just a little bit troubled that we didn't try to quantify the, the silicosis exposure to the, the sulfur exposure as, as well as we looked at the tobacco exposure or, or even the asbestos exposure. I was going to put all of those together and say skin cancer. And um, the reason why, though, the diagnosis is silicosis is because the, the, the type of the cancer is that these systems are greatly replicated with silicosis in our ancestors. They were very huge plants, huge, very small diameter plants. They were very cancer exposure. So what we saw is a pretty regular line like the plants we see today. So they started in a lower location. The next slide is on what you guys are quoting here with the sulfur exposure. It's going to get to this trench that is walking by the sand blast here, but it's um, once a week versus immersed in it for its total exposure time. I, I, although I don't have the specific Sulfur exposure I have down here because in all of these things I'm trying to put in my mind and I'm talking to somebody that if we just have enough exposure to cause the diagnosis, then I think <coughs> sulfur could win the race. And that was my, I guess, what I was making was kind of my question. Yeah. Is, you know, everything else you've been so careful and so, so painstaking and well, it's consistent in those things, and yet the one key element yeah. you can think is I, the I agree with you. I agree with you with the biodiversity, uh, but I, I can say that at, at the time I was doing this, and I had to convince myself in my own mind that I had to do this. It was not silica exposure that um, slowed down that passing of the cat cancer. Now, what is the better way for it now? Yes. But it not back in any of the, uh, of the law firms involved in prosecuting to, to try to make the diagnosis of silicosis? No. It, the law firm never tried to convince me to want to use a, a diagnosis to make a diagnosis of or treat me with any of these other things that were in our firm's case. Let me just ask for my general question of, of both our presenters, because it's you know, one of the things is that, as a doctor sitting up here that you've had lots of things that are almost, it's like almost taking responsibility for the for the patients that you're responding to. And there may have been some things that were added to the reports that may have been been things that were done erroneously, whether it was intent to have a dollar for the defense. Is it, are you aware of any efforts that have been made to contact the patients involved and 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 set the record straight, uh, set the record straight as to uh, the fact that you were in fact their 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 treating physician at that point, and set the record straight that there had been a uh, now the report you had amended in the past is different than the report that you would have signed if they had a dollar for every other complaint in this particular case. I know you have to get around on your first question. Uh, the one after the one. Yeah. Yeah. I was aware, you know, at this point in the business, I don't know that I would feel it's an obligation to try to do that. I don't think that Rebecca came up with that kind of right. story. But now you see that a report has been generated under your, under your signature and under the patient's name. And that patient is going to have a hard time getting licensed to present in this court of ours. Are you aware of any effort that's been made to contact these individuals and set the record straight on their behalf or in your behalf? Well, it's, I don't have any reason to believe there was any effort. So it'd be your opinion that it would be the law firm that would be involved in the case. Or send an advocate to the mail straight to the that would be responsible for that. What about you, Dr. Osborne? Are there any efforts to, to, to go back and correct the record on, on behalf of any of the patients? I believe that if I do do this and I can just of anybody I've done do this, I believe strongly that the diagnosis of this, this disease, which I've made through this whole process far after me, I believe that I can put my knowledge I have had this and told anybody that they had a psychosis that I didn't do this or that that I would get passed. I, I believe that it's my diagnosis that when I get made that and I'm accurate. So this patient that you just have here in your desk is on the report for the same that they come into your office and absolutely the same methodology that I use in my office is what I use when I see people. I ask them the same questions uh, over and over and over again. And so 
Sunday comes in one eye. Actually, I think God's looking at what somebody's coming in for one occupation over here and just want to stand on that Sunday. I may not get into the preoccupation of each of these two groups if, if, if they're coming in because they may have occupation and they're not, so they think they have civil services so they can't really attend church. But my, my wife has a stand in for a way of answering the question and something that she pertinent to do a certain thing to say that I don't understand. But if this has been less for me, it's actually been a great little bubble here at Pastor Dan. Yeah. You would have a way of knowing whether or not they do what is frequently been recommended for follow-up as far as focusing on Bible information for the book or in that phrase. Uh, there would be some, some method to make sure that your, your order of your requests were complied with. But making a good text of the read on and go back Person is not supposed to know whether or not those those recommendations are complied with. Even in West Virginia, when somebody comes in to see me for any of my last five and coming, and they say, Hey, I'd like to see you, something like that, I tell them, Get back to me as soon as you have the door. You need to see me when you call me. Don't call me when I'm taking two minutes to get there. Now, in that case, they may never come back to see me again. Uh, Honestly, you know, you were talking about. Yeah, but I just don't think they'd like more of what you're saying. The more I help you make that decision, the more they help you make that decision. And, 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 and we often do make the point that this is almost a matter of degree. There will be people asking us for another one job a week. We spend a lot of time in my office trying to get family doctors for things that Dermot wants to do. We love to see Dermot volunteer. But when you have done that in Texas, you stand there for three days. If I saw something on a patient going that looked like cancer, Certainly would have told them that they had cancer, but I also would have given this notification about the subject to two weeks, this notification to change it to another doctor. Let me just ask you one more time to read that question. Is there any doctor recommending any specific exposure criteria that you would report it? No. That was just a bit generous. I think you know. I guess that's the point. Good question. Dr. Hilton, when you were employed by the other government, Describe the x rays for the people that came in to see Dr. Gatcher on occasion. As I saw them, did you ever describe the x rays for the people that came in and you were told that you were going to see them? Up until today, I would have said no. But the what one form of the x ray looked like that I did, and there may have been one time when I did. Which, which form was that? The first x ray. Dr. Hilton, you may have been asking me the wrong one. I, I don't recognize it. I, I was silent. I don't remember that. I really don't remember that, but that's my signature. And so there may have been one time when I did. Okay, therefore, you were not aware that that was something that you wanted to do. I don't know if I did that, and I'm quite very surprised to see you having done that. Okay. Were you ever asked to prescribe by an RTS that refused to do so? And this was a, you heard the, you heard the testimony of a gentleman from the Texas Regulatory Body that their license was never issued to RTS conducting x-rays in Texas. And yet you probably also saw the invoice that RTS submitted to the Department of Probate for Humphrey and Beaumont Counties in the amount of 50000 to approve the financial statement. Did they respond to that? Tab 13. But anyway, it was very clearly that you all were never licensed to do this in Texas. It was a violation of Texas rules and regulations, and you all were aware of that. Is that your conclusion that you think you were going to look at this invoice that was sent in to protest The invoice, it looks like it was in Texas. <laughs> Were you the the road manager? I can't specifically say that, yes or no. Were you ever in Texas yourself taking x rays with RTS? I would say yes. Can you, can you give 
you can really just do this with four dollars and two bits of mass transfer. And the laser doesn't do that. You want to expect X ray? That would never be the middle of heaven. Well, in order to know if we were likely to take X rays from that particular state, that would depend on our X ray definition. And there was a lot of X rays that you found that were not in that. How can we have certain for any one of them? I'm going to just point out that you found that. Thank you. 